Thanks for stopping by. This is the video where the car will finally become complete, for real this time. In the last video, we left off with fully welding in the inner structure for the quarter panel and then test fitting the trunk to verify the fitment. So in this video, all that's left is welding on the quarter panel. I've been seeing some comments asking about what happened to the car. So I figured I'd give you guys a brief recap. So this will get you up to date or it'll be a nice refresher for you guys. I've had this car for what, seven, eight years now and I've been restoring it for the past year and a half now. The day I finished the car, I ended up getting T-boned in an intersection. I was sitting to the hospital that night, and then the very next day, I picked up the car from the impound lot, got to work on it, I made it drivable again, drove it home, I made some additional repairs, and then drove it four and a half hours to a drift event, drifted the drift event. Drove four and a half hours home in the rain. That was fun. And then I let it sit for a month or so because I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. I thought that was the last time I was gonna drive it. Then I ended up taking it to a frame shop where we would pull most of the damage out from the frame rails. And the shop owner let me do that because he was actually on his way out. He was about to retire. Then he ended up retiring. So then I had to get the car out of the shop. And then we somehow got it to my friend Stevie's house where I would then cut the car completely apart down to the frame rails. The only thing left on the car, honestly, was the driver's side, right? hand drive quarter panel and the rear taillight skin. I would then collect parts out of part out cars, such as the roof, the whole left side of a car, core support, shock towers, firewall. And once I got all the parts, I made a jig out of straight S13s and then put the jigs on my car so that I knew where to align these new parts. Then I trimmed the new parts so they would fit my car and they'd fit together. I learned how the structures work and then I tack welded the car together. Everything fit how it should. And then I welded it enough to be a roller. We ended up towing it to my mom's house where it is right Right now. While I was here, I would continue to weld the rest of the car together, as well as make tubs in the engine bay, fix the RB25 because it had a whole bunch of issues, and drop it in, and then have the very first test drive last fall. And then over winter, it got super busy, super cold. Didn't get much done on it, although I did have trouble finding a good usable quarter panel, as some of you may know. But this quarter panel should be the last piece of the puzzle, at least body-wise. I will eventually cage the car, and then I'm gonna have to paint it and seal it and all that stuff. I did make a 240 repair playlist that includes all of the videos in order. So if you guys wanna check it out, it's attached to every single 240 video. But let's continue where we left off so we can get this car running and driving again. I do have a couple events coming up and I'd like to drift this car by the end of the month. We'll see if we make it. All right, I guess the next step is test fitting the skin with the trunk on. Moment of truth, did we get all of our measurements correct? This is technically the last body piece to align to the car to verify that it's straight. Oh, so far so good. Overall, not bad. So with this side lined up perfectly flush, this side is also flush, but a little too flush. This quarter panel is actually resting on the trunk, how it is now. And that is because none of these spot welds are lined up. So this backing plate, as you guys may know, is very flimsy and very flexible. So I can actually just move this like that. So what needs to happen is this hole needs to line up with that spot weld. It's hard to do with one hand. And this little cap needs to align as well and right now this quarter panel is sunk in too much because this rear clip is folded forward ever so slightly so when it's pulled back and this is pushed over we have a perfect gap so ideally this is where we want it to sit now it may look weird to you but remember this trunk doesn't have any bushings in it so it will actually sit up a couple millimeters higher than it is now and that's exactly where we want it and this spot weld is lined up perfectly now I know I do a lot of talking about my thought process on how I go about things and I do that so hopefully it makes sense to you guys and also that it could possibly inspire you guys to try your own methods. My favorite thing to do is test fit over and over and over again just to verify that everything is good because once you weld it in it becomes a whole nother issue trying to take it off and readjust it. This is the beauty of taking your time and doing it as well as you possibly can. And man I am so hyped on that. Holy crap. That actually looks like a complete car now. Well, now I have to take off the quarter panel once again because I forgot that I need to prep the metal that's under here on this backing plate. You can actually still see some of the adhesive there. The 
weld through primer is already dried and this looks so crispy. And I even went ahead and sprayed the weld through primer on the inside of the quarter panel and it's dry. So this is ready to go as well. The last thing I want to do before putting the quarter panel on officially is leave myself a little note in case I'm ever here again and put on one of these glow in the dark stickers so this can glow forever. I figured it'd be cool to put how many subs are currently on the channel. That way when I look back at this video someday, I can see how much I've grown. It's so exciting. And if you're part of the pre-100k gang, shout out to you. You're a real one. I'm going to spray some clear coats so that stays forever. Same with that. And now it is hailing. Nice. The hardest part about this is going to be trying to clamp this down while aligning the trunk because this back plate has so much play in it and you can see the gap that it has right now. This is the quarter panel and it needs to be flush with this back plate here. And I'm not going to be able to clamp it here because the trunk is going to be closed. So maybe I'll use the C-clamp here. That might be my best option. I ended up putting a few clamps on. We have one clamp here and one there. This is a really big bag clip. <laughs> and I also put on the tail light filler so I can make sure I get this correct. Which I'm glad I did because it is very off how it sits right now. So it looks like I'm going to need to push out the quarter panel probably about half an inch, maybe even more. And then make sure that this sits in the correct spot. You can see right here, this is the edge of it that needs to sit on the edge of the inner panel. Unfortunately, this was the only way I was able to clamp down the quarter panel onto the rear skin piece. And I'm not able to close the trunk to verify, but I do know for sure that when this spot weld is lined up, it fits perfectly. So I know it's in the correct spot and I was even able to push over the quarter panel ever so slightly. And now the tail light filler lines up, which is very satisfying. Oh, hey, and even this spot weld lines up. That's pretty cool too. Well, I guess it is time to start welding this quarter panel on. So excited. Whew, look at that thing, man. That looks so good. I only tack welded the quarter panel in because I want to make sure that the trunk fits before I weld the entire thing on. This is what we got so far. Just two tiny little guys in there. So I guess we could take off this C-clamp now and then close the trunk and see. Perfect. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Sick. Can't wait to put the bushings in here so this actually sits correctly. Oh my gosh, it's so good. All right, we gotta put a tail light on. I didn't even test fit a tail light yet. This is the real moment of truth right here. Well, I guess I have to pop the trunk for that. Dude, no freaking way. Look at that. It almost fits better than this side. <laughs> Can you believe that? Just think about how many pieces this car was in. Also, the door just works perfectly. No welds on this side yet. <laughs> like, what? That's insane. All right, I'm gonna close the trunk and see how the tail light looks. Also, remember, I didn't tighten those bolts down. That's why there's overhang. You just slide this thing around. So this is how it's supposed to sit. Wait, right about there. Before I continue welding the rest of the quarter panel, I do want to trim back the front of this quarter panel because I would much rather have the old roof quarter panel be butted against the new quarter panel because we don't want a weld gap here. If I clamp that down, that's not gonna be pretty. 
That's too thick. I think this will technically be the very first time I use the Dremel on this car. I figured this would be a lot better to use to get that tiny piece off. Because if I use the full angle grinder, it might grind too much away. Now that the quarter panel is tacked onto the car, I'm not going to want to take off the quarter panel now if I grind too far deep. You know what I mean? Alright, check how much better this will fit. Flush. This is now ready to be welded. But before I start fully welding the quarter panel on, I definitely want to take off the hatch because I don't want to ruin the glass that's on it. But everything is either tack welded or clamped into position so I know the quarter panel is good to go. That was honestly nerve-wracking being upside down grinding away these welds but <laughs> I needed to make sure I grinded some of them smooth that way I can fit a window on here and for rolling this quarter panel these need to be smoothed out as well because if they're bumped up like this it'll catch and that'll just cause wavy quarter panel and we don't want wavy quarter panels we did all this work we're gonna make them look nice but yeah check it out door opens and closes That's so satisfying. All this is cleaned up. This looks good. I need to start figuring out how I'm going to seal the quarter panel, the inner skin, and the wheel wells. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Next, I wanna flatten down the welds that are inside this seam, the trunk seam. I'm gonna have this special flappy disc that you can use on the edge. So that'd be really nice because otherwise you can't really get in there nicely with the standard flappy disc. I honestly can't lie, this quarter panel came out better than I had anticipated. Everything lines up so well. The door opens and closes without issues. It just... Oh. oh, my gaskets fell. That's kind of a sneak peek into the next video. We are going to be replacing the turbo because if you guys remember, the very first test drive after rebuilding the entire car, the turbo blew. We should test fit the trunk, tail light, and center section and honestly, maybe even the rear bumper. I wouldn't mind doing that. Let's do that. That'll give us the full effect and it'll feel like an actual complete car. The only thing that'll be missing is glass at that point. And if you want one of these, the link is in the description. There's a couple more stickers available now. I made some new ones. Or come to one of those events coming up and I'll give you one for free. Just say hi. These things come with nasty adhesive on them. That's all right. This is technically the first time this bumper will be test fitted this entire series. Let's hope it still fits. That is so satisfying. It does have a little bend down here, but I think that's just because the bumper was sitting all crazy. That'll fold back in. I only put one nut on this side, and I only put one nut on this side, and this thing fits perfect. Oh, I forgot I had this little boof on here. 
This is from when I hit the wall during season closer when the car was smashed. I just ever so slightly grazed it. All right, we gotta get the hatch on here to really seal this in. Holy crap. That's insane, man, with the bumper on. All right, you're next. I didn't put any bolts on the top, so this is gonna be able to slide freely. Man, I just, you know what? Let's see if the other hatch has some grommets on it. Let's steal it off of there and we can get the full effect right now. I'm dying to see this. I forgot that I put Integra hood spacers as the trunk grommets because the stock ones are not adjustable and that always bothered me. So I might have to drill the trunk holes bigger to fit these. I don't know if I made the modification on this trunk or not. All right, the grommets were too big. They didn't fit in the holes. I don't think I want to drill out this trunk. So instead, I'm going to set them here so the trunk can sit on it. And before I close the trunk, I need to put the center garnish on. And I don't think I have the stock 240 center garnish here, but I do have a very sentimental piece to me. This is a 180SX center garnish that I bought off of my friend, Sam Cooper. And this is how I met him. Well, I guess he didn't need to open the trunk. All right, I need to bolt this in. <laughs> For three or four nuts holding this entire rear end together, it does not look bad. I mean, just check that out. That is insane. Complete car. An actual complete car now. This is bent, so don't mind that gap. These grommets are not even mounted correctly. They're just <laughs> sitting in there, so this could even be better fitment. But for a rough mock-up, holy crap. Wild. And just to think, this is where we started. And then this was part two. This was the quarter panel that came on the half cut. And now part three. I'm beyond hyped right now. I just can't stop looking at it. I really want to replace the turbo now so we can drive it. Well, thank you guys for sticking around. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to make sure that you're pre-100K gang. Because once it's 100K, you're not pre-100K. And don't forget to drop a comment. Peace. Have a good day. Look at these chunks in here. Oh, no.